Hi everyone, before today's video, I wanted to make a quick announcement about the new VIP Masterclass series that I just started. It features tailor-made videos customized to members' video requests, whether it be on the repertoire piece that they're working on or about a piano technique question in general. If you want to check it out, click on the link below. Now, on to today's video. Hi everyone, this is Josh with Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is entitled to master sight reading, do this, okay? I promise this works. I don't know if you'll be completely satisfied with your sight reading and say, oh, I'm, I'm a master sight reader uh, right away, but I promise this works. This was all spurred after seeing this amazing blind pianist that won the Van Cliburn. And he played all the Chopin etudes for his first round. And I mean, they had to basically like help him to the piano and, and when he sat down, he kind of felt around for the keys. And then, you know, just like stunning playing. And I remember, I think he played Waldstein. I mean, huge gaps. And so it got me thinking because I was looking at so many of my young students and they were always going up, down, up, down, up, down. Now I've told you in other sight reading videos you know, try to only look at the music. I'm gonna tell you now, never look at your hands. You have to develop a spatial recognition of the keyboard in order to master sight reading or to get confident at it. And I don't consider myself a master sight reader by any means. There's people that can completely uh, deduce an orchestral score on the spot. That takes a lot of practice to be able to do that. Um, other people can sight read extremely difficult uh, repertoire on the spot in tempo. I don't really consider myself a master of that at all. I do consider myself a quick learner though. If you give me an hour with a piece, I can get it pretty good, but uh, depending on the intensity of the piece, obviously. But um, the first time I was always pretty weak at until I started using this method and it really helped. And I think I got fairly good at this when I was doing a lot of accompanying because you can't be looking down at your hands and then look back up because it, it disorients you. You're like, oh crap, where was I in the music? It takes you a second to find it. So what I've been having my students do is only look at their uh, music by developing this spatial recognition based on three notes of uh, the three black keys and the two black keys. So if you walked me into this room, so you know you shut the piano, I scoot around on the bench so you know I'm not marking my spot, and then you say find a middle C. Okay, well I here's two black keys. Here's two black keys. This feels like probably about the middle of the piano right here. Okay, there's middle C. I did that with my eyes closed, okay? You say find a high G. Okay, I go up, I find my three black keys. Okay, I've got three black keys here. Now I go to the one right above the first black key because I know it's F, G, A, B. Uh, find me a low E. Okay, so here we go. We find two black keys and you go to the one above it because I know C, D, and E. You never have to find it. Um, looking at it again. Uh, the only exception that I'll allow my students to look down when they're sight reading is if there's a humongous jump, like you know, like an octave, like over an octave, and they're not advanced pianists. I'll let them do that, but I'm not even going to do that for you today. This is the Rachmaninoff Prelude in B flat major, one of the more difficult Rachmaninoff preludes in my opinion, and we are going to just dive in, and I'm going to show you exactly what I do. If I look down at my hands, I will start at the beginning of the piece again. And I make my students do that too. I had this, the first student I ever did this with, her name's Edna, just this very sweet lady that I teach, uh, came to piano later in life. And she blossomed when she started doing this. She said, she admitted, she's like, I am not a good sight reader, that's my weak spot. And now it's one of her strengths, I feel like. So it's amazing how this works, okay? Here we go. So I'm going to find my lowest, B flats on the piano, okay? So here's my three black keys. So it's a top B flat. Okay, there we go. Oops. Already start to kind of shape it as well. Purposely mess up here. Let's go. Say, oh shoot, I missed that B flat. Rather than looking down and seeing where I'm at, I'm going to reset. I'm going to say, okay, where's my three black keys? Here they are. I fill them with my thumb. 
Here's the third flat, and I know what an octave feels like. Okay, I'm re back. I'm back on those keys, and let's see. The B flat comes in between an E and an F. Say I got disoriented with this hand, I'm gonna find an E and an F. Here's my two black keys. Here is my E and my F. Okay, I'm good to go. I never had to look down at my hands to do that. dispel a few myths for each of you because I've taught and I'm not I'm still a young guy so I'm not saying I'm a master teacher at all but I have spent a great majority of my life teaching piano since I was 16 and also a great majority of my life practicing the piano so basically my life has been piano for the last well 24 years I'm 29 now I started when I was five and heavily when I started uh, teaching at age 16 I've never seen this argument work in favor of the student. I don't want to memorize it right now because then I'm going to stop reading my music. That's the dumbest argument. I understand why teachers say it's dumb because their students go home and they say, okay, I've got B flats. Okay, I never have to look at that B flat again. Okay, now I've got an F. Okay, I never have to look at that. I've memorized. To memorize as you go doesn't mean that you are not going to look at your music. After I memorize, I'm still spending about 80% of the time with my music open. I'm not doing it just from my mind because there's things that I'll miss in the score and there's new discoveries to be made all the time. But don't make that mistake of telling your students, never memorize this because then you'll become bad at reading. Assign them five to 10 minutes of sight reading every day to warm up, to get the creative juices flowing, to you know keep that, their minds sharp. I noticed that sight reading is a perishable skill. If you're always working at it, it gets really strong. It's like working out. If you're always working that muscle with little rests in between, you know, you don't have to do it every single day for long periods of time, you know, 10 minutes a day or every other day for 20 or 30 minutes, you know, it will stay strong. If you stop sight reading, I even noticed with myself, even after all these years of teaching and um, accompanying and performing, if I don't sight read on a consistent basis, my sight reading becomes weak. Um, so that's something that I would recommend. Have sight reading, if you're a teacher, have sight reading be a separate activity from their pieces. Their repertoire pieces they can memorize as quick as they want, as long as they're continuing to look at their music. I don't care if they have it locked away up here. Basically what you're telling your students is to be brain dead. If, if you're saying, don't memorize this piece, after they've played it for two months, they'd have to be an idiot to not have it memorized if it's a simple little piece. You're, you're telling them to shut off their brain and not memorize it. Of course, if, if you read a speech you know, for two months straight every single day for 30 minutes a day, you're gonna have that speech memorized or close to it by the end of those two months. So allow your students to memorize. If you are a student, allow yourself to memorize, but continue using the music. And to be a better sight reader, use it as a separate activity each day. Never look at your hands develop that spatial recognition so that if somebody said sight read this and I wanted to look down at those B flats it's okay because I've been training to not look at those B flats so if under pressure you have to glance down at your hands real quick for a big jump who cares because you've been training without looking so it'll be that much easier I hope this has been helpful um, I know I get fairly passionate about this subject it's because I see a lot of poor teaching um, from students that come to me from other teachers and they have all these misconceptions of error, errors in, 
efficiency. It's not that these methods are going to make you a horrible pianist, but like constantly looking up and down at your hands and then um, at your music and back and forth, or being brain dead and never memorizing your piece, that's going to slow down your progress. I want these videos, I make these videos for free for each of you to try to help you become as, as good as possible because I feel like I want to share this because I've been lucky enough to study with some of the best teachers in the world. I want to share that. Um, so please feel free to email me with any questions. Uh, I do want to take a moment and thank each of you who have donated either to our Christmas album or to this project. Um, we truly do appreciate that. That helps us so much in our careers. Um, so I'll link those down below if you um, feel like you would like to donate as well. Uh, we are so grateful for that. We just had our little baby girl, Lola, uh, Lindsay and I, and we couldn't be happier. So um, your support means a great deal to us. Have a wonderful week. Good luck in your studies. And uh, thank you for your support. Uh, I was going to say good luck with sight reading. See you later.